Today, we're looking at a fascinating hybrid of traditional and non-traditional schooling methods that growing numbers of homeschoolers are investing in both financially and personally. It's called the university model. And here to tell us what all the fuss is about is author and homeschool veteran, Tammy Kaiser. Stay with us. Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. I'm Lisa Maladnik, your host, and we're going to have a really interesting conversation today about the university model of homeschooling with Tammy Kaiser, who's the author of Smart Martha's Catholic Guide for Busy Moms. She's been homeschooling her kids in every manner of way, almost, for over 25 years. Currently, her caboose daughter attends a university model school. Besides still mothering her 10 children and grandmothering nine, Tammy works, works part-time as a dance teacher, tutor, an author and speaker, and the producer of video programs for women now available on Formed. She hosts the yearly online Catholic Conference for Moms, and the four is a number four, but it's found at heartridgeministries.com, exactly the way that sounds, heartridgeministries.com. You can find her also at tammykaiser.com, and that's T-A-M-I-K-I-S-E-R.com, and at her affiliate site, Catholic Family Celebrations. Dot com, where she encourages liturgical living for busy families. Welcome, Tammy. It's so good to have you here with us today. Oh, it's good to be talking to you, Lisa. Yeah, and um, just for those of you who were at our summer conference last year online, it was the Inspire Virtual Summer Conference in 2019, Tammy presented for us on the Slacker's Guide for Homeschooling. So she's really done it all. She, she's had a lot of fun with homeschooling. She's been through a lot of what all of you have been through with ups and downs, obviously with a big family. And, um, and now she's going to talk to us about something else that she's trying that's working really well. So we'll dive into what the university model is in detail. But first, just give us, you know, step us into your family, the ages of your children, and where you are in your homeschooling journey. Okay. Um, my oldest child is 31, which is so hard to believe. But as you <laughs> heard, you know, I'm, I'm a grandmother. So I've got, you know, grandchildren, and I really have um, you know, both feet in kind of both worlds, grandma, but still a, a busy mom and a, a homeschooling mom. Yeah. And I've got two um, college students who are living at home. So they're commuting back and forth to school. I have a, a high school junior who attends a private Catholic school. And then like you mentioned the bio, I have this, my caboose daughter, um, she's seven. So um, there's quite a gap there. And so you can sort of see why, you know, I was, I was seeking another alternative for her. Um, I homeschooled all the others up until middle school and some up until high school. But mm -hmm. for her, there's no other kids around the house. And so I really wanted to homeschool, but I felt it would be kind of lonely with just her. So, um, you know, I was looking for something else. And I really believe that God plopped this into my lap. Mm, that's interesting. I always love to yeah. hear that because God does provide. And sometimes just at the right moment, we become aware of something that is really an answer to prayer. And sometimes it's not even organized prayer. I notice I'm just starting to need something and God pops right. something, like you said, plops it into your lap. That's right. He knows what's in our hearts even before we ask sometimes, but he loves it when we ask. So, and it's amazing when we do ask, you know, that, that God will have something show up. Sometimes it takes us a while to recognize it, you know, right? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. I, I think probably a lot of those buses go right by me. Um, but okay, so the university model now, you've got a child at home with no siblings to be schooled with. There's that sense of isolation. How does the university model help? Okay, um, well, I'll tell you too how it plopped into my lap as well. Um, okay, great. Yeah, actually, I think I'd love to hear that story. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I, I've been working. Um, part-time, as you've heard in the bio, as a dance teacher 
and this is at a high school and it's just two days a week. And I had been taking my daughter with me, you know, she was in kindergarten. And so she would come and just hang out in the back of the class. And then, um, you know, we would sort of do our, you know, how kindergarten homeschooling is those of us who are veteran homeschoolers sometimes. And that's where the slacker thing comes in, of course. So you'll see. So we were just sort of having fun, but then I was thinking, I'm going to have to get a little more serious about homeschooling as she's getting older and how's that going to look? And then I found out, I heard that there's a, a nice private school that met just twice a week. And I thought, oh, that sounds so ideal for me because perhaps it lines up with the two days that I teach. And lo and behold, yes, it did. Wow. So it meets on, it's a Tuesday and Thursday. And I go, oh, that could just be perfect for her because then she's sort of watched on those days while I'm working. So I, I asked, and I, I, this was a mom that was at, you know, my daughter's ballet class, you know, how those conversations with moms, they oh, where do your kids go to school, all that kind of thing. And so she was saying, she was telling me about the school that she loved. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to look into it. So I looked into it. And um, for some reason, it, it just struck me as being so expensive for just two days a week. And I don't know, I haven't looked at tuition prices for all university model schools. So I don't want to say it out there. But you know, for us, I'm thinking that's the same price as what, you know, a lot of these other elementary schools. And, you know, and I've been thinking about whether I should send my daughter to school or not, too. And I just did not, I do not want to send my daughter to school. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. But, you know, she's my last one. And I'm just really cherishing that time with her. Um, and, you know, but, but I'm a weary mother. This is my 10th child. I'm sort of tired of homeschooling at the same time. So I was looking into schools, too. So I thought a school that meant twice would be great. So I looked at it. Price I thought was too much. This is sort of out of our budget. It's, it's more of a matter of pride for me to like, I am not paying that same price for some school that just meets twice a week, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which is just silly. I mean, um, but, you know, for someone who's especially homeschooling moms out there, we know what it's like to keep a budget. You know, we've got we're not working, so we're not bringing in an extra salary and, you know, we're counting every penny, too. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'm, I'm, I've looked into it and I love the curriculum they were doing. And it was very Christian, but I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And then I find out that, and you heard in my bio too, I also tutor. Well, there were kids in the school, two of the two siblings around the same age as my daughter who also needed their, their mother wanted extra tutoring for them and help. She also worked. So she wanted help with them at the school. And so long story short, I tutor them it covers my tuition for the month. So that's, that's how, you know, I really feel God has put this in, into my life. And so, you know, after being at the school for two years, um, you know, we, we love it. We just mm. love it. Um, couldn't be more pleased with it. And, you know, from the slacker home school definition, you've given me Lisa, thank you very much. <laughs> so very true though. I can't deny it. Um, you know, I, I get kind of lazy and at, and I'm just busy with so much, and not so much being lazy, but I'm just busy and distracted and, um, you know, getting weary of doing those math problems again for the, you know, 10th time through Saxon. Can you imagine, you know, oh, so <laughs> I, I needed the extra encouragement that, and, and the discipline of another school. So I can I just clarify something? Model, so let me see yeah, I could, yeah. so I can sort of define it. Yeah, we'll do, um, dive into that in one second. But I just wanted to clarify something, Tammy. Yeah. Because you're anything but a slacker. I know. Yeah, that's what's so funny. I just want to clarify um, for those of you who have <laughs> gone to the archives or attended live our summer conference last year. Watch and listen to what Tammy's talking about with the Slacker's Guide, because ultimately it's about setting things up in such a way that you're not you're not working harder than you need to be. That's right. Not a matter of not showing up and getting everything right. done. It's and staying in bed. Yeah, it's a very intentional <laughs> model. So please understand don't, uh, that oh. the soccer model is something that we can all really learn from. It's a really excellent model. Sure, there's, so. there's no homeschooling parent who is a slacker. I mean, come on, yeah, right, Lisa? Not. None of us are slackers. Yeah, Some of us definition. like to sleep in. I'll admit that. I love to sleep in. <laughs> but that's just because we stay up late. You know what I mean? That's all. Right. Bonding um, as a family, right? So back, I'll talk about, I'll go back to the homeschool model and what, uh, I'm sorry, the university model and what that is. Um, it was founded by parents and pretty much in the 90s, somewhere in Texas. I don't want to go the whole um, history of it, but they were looking for that perfect union of here's the good things you get from going to a school. And here's the good things you get from being homeschooled. Is there some way we can combine them together in a little more in a formal way than, than a co-op? 
Um, they wanted just that little more structure. I know there's a lot of co-ops out there that are that are very structured, and you know they start to look a little bit like this university model too. But this is like completely structured, just like a, a school, I would say. So on two days a week, and as the kids get into the middle school grades, they actually meet three days a week. But on the, the two days a week, they have it looks just like a regular little private. Christian school. You know, they have chapel. Um, and it, this university model of schools can follow other educational philosophies, but most of them stick to the class, classical curriculum, which I was very familiar with. That's what I had fallen on in my homeschool. Even from the beginning, I, I was really drawn to that classical curriculum. So they're following and by this classical, classical you mean, just sort of give us a brief overview of what you mean by classical curriculum. Really, yeah, but, um, well, don't you have a podcast on that, Lisa, that you can say, refer to this podcast <laughs> on the classical curriculum. Um, you know, it has the different stages of learning. Mm. Um, you do... Oh, that's so hard to define. Um, I don't mean like a dictionary definition. Oh, good. I mean, just, I, and, and I, I don't. You're using Charlotte like Mason. Saying, he has no idea what classical. Was. But right. so, yeah. like, we use this the story of the world for our history, for instance. Um, there's a lot of memorization that goes on in, in the younger grades. Mm -hmm. um, as they get older, they do more of the um, learning Socratically that 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 type of thing. But in the younger grades, it's just. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at, it, it's also Charlotte Mason, a lot of Charlotte Mason. So it's, it's just a hybrid. And by classical too, I would say, you know, there is Latin in the, in the school as well, but just that, that filling their minds with um, the facts there. But along the same lines though, they've got the Charlotte Mason model, which I love too, as a homeschooler, um, just a, observing what's going on around. And, you know, we've got nature journals and all those, the, the, the beautiful things of, of living books and, mm -hmm. and being excited about, about the learning process and, and learning, you know, actually mm -hmm. more, more emphasis on the learning and discovering than, um, I don't know, than just busy work and workbooks and that kind of thing. So not but, just but so, so, desks all day, but really very active learning in a lot of different ways. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so, so I, I, these are things that I had sort of fallen upon in, in my own homeschool. You know, like I said, I did all kinds of things, tried so many things out. And that was sort of another confirmation to me, too, that this was a really good, good home for me because they were doing the same curriculum that I kind of ended up doing at the end of my, you know, ninth child. You know, yeah, these are the same things that we're doing. So that was like really good confirmation. And they're not Catholic, but um, very biblically based. And you've got to love that as long as you're learning um, scripture, you can't, you can't go wrong with that. So we'll see if there's any, um, we'll, we'll see if the things come up in the school about the the, the missing parts of the faith and stuff like that. I know we've had discussions already with my daughter. She's young. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking for that, but I, I don't think it'll be any, any problem. You know, they're not set out to be any denomination. They just really want children to have a relationship with God. And so, you know, that's definitely what we want as well. Mm -hmm. But as, on a practical way, what I needed as the, the slacker homeschooler is I needed that that schedule like mm -hmm. so on Tuesdays and Thursdays while she's meeting with another teacher you know they go through the regular stuff the regular schedule of school there's the classes are, are small there's only like 10 to 12 students per class and then um the there's lesson plans as if we were a substitute teacher we kind of look like that so if you're a substitute teacher coming in teaching your students on these other days here's what you would follow Mm -hmm. And they actually call the parents co-teachers. Mm -hmm. So we're, um, you know, we're the same, same teachers, same kind of respect or, um, you know, like, like we are formal teachers of, at that school with, of our mm -hmm. own students. And mm -hmm. it's really beautiful because then you get the opportunity to experience and learn these same things that your student or your child is learning. And, and how cool is that? Mm -hmm. How do they prepare the parents to be able to step into that model and carry on the work on the three other days, assuming it's a five day a week model? Sure. Um, we are required to go to a training and that's just two full days. And then they have these other trainings if you're new to the school that you go to. So they have a training for, um, they've just recently switched to Singapore math from Saxon, which made me kind of sad because I love that Saxon math. 
<laughs> but they um so they have these Singapore math training. So you'll go and spend you know three or four hours learning about that particular math, the English. Um, oh, I always heard ELTL, the English language through. Oh, they don't help me out. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, English sorry. lessons through language. That particular program. Uh-huh. So they'll have trainings for that, mm-hmm. and, and you learn all that. Um, you know how those those the philosophies behind those programs and how to do those. Mm-hmm. And then they have a nice little Latin class for parents that can go to learn Latin. So it's a lot of fun. Mm. Um, as a parent, because then you're, you're learning these things and you're not expected, you know, don't worry. You're not expected. They don't expect me to learn Latin because I'm not, but I can just sort of understand um, sort of the structure of Latin and then how they're going to be teaching it. Mm-hmm. And then, and, you know, you're, you're flipping flashcards and, and things like that from then on out. Mm-hmm. And, and what are the qualifications of the teachers in the actual program on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Um, Many of them are certified teachers. I know some have come from public schools. Mm-hmm. Um, many of them are mothers in the school, which you could imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they mm-hmm. have children that are in the school. But there's mm-hmm. a mixture. And they, they it's, it's pretty tough to become one. I mean, they screen them pretty well. And you have to have um, the, the faith is very important at this particular one that I'm going to. Um, the, the, the parents who decided to do this and you know there's there's a website the um the university model school international so it's just umsi.com has all information and they've got they help people to start these schools over the nation mm-hmm. and when i looked online recently it looks like they have about 80 or 90 schools all over the united states so there might be one nearby and it might be mm-hmm. something that if you're part of a co-op you know, and you want something a little more formal, that could be a logical next step. Um, and, and then they have, you know, and it's, it's, it's laid out in a very, a very good support group. Mm, and, and is there a sort of a mentoring relationship between the teachers and the parents? Um, yes. The, the, what I have found that, um, I don't know if it's in the training or qualifications of the actual, the teachers, remember, they call us the co-teachers, but it's emphasized to them it must be because we get this message from them that they are there to help us. And there is absolutely nothing that we could ask that would be sound stupid or dumb. And they're also so um, forgiving. And um, like, if, if you're, you know, like if you're taking care of a sick child or something like that, and you know, and you're not able to get to the homework or, you know, you're pregnant and you have morning sickness or something, the teachers at our particular school, and I imagine it would be like that in the others, you know, they're understanding they've, they've been through, through all of this before, but there, there's, there's a lot of, of give and take, um, mm-hmm. a lot of understanding that, you know, just tell them your situation. And, and there's a lot of Christian charity. They will go out of their way to help you. Mm-hmm. I have found that. And I've heard a lot of stories in the school about other mothers who've experienced that. Mm-hmm. And so it's not, you know, so if you've got that, you know, you've got a lot of kids and you're juggling. I just think there's a lot of understanding, whereas maybe in other schools, there be, might be a little bit more rigorous. Mm-hmm. I, I know you mentioned uh, previously um, when we talked about this, that they were doing Bible memorization and things like that. Yeah. Do you find that with, even though the program itself is not a denominational uh, kind of environment, do you find that there are faith issues that crop up with your daughter? Is she Is she finding that she has to... I mean, I know she's very young yeah, she's at this young, point. But like, you know, I, I tutor some older kids as well at the school. So I have a lot of, um, and, and, and this is another God thing too. Lisa. This was funny, but the, the family that I, I, this was, I answered an email of an email of an email of someone who was interested in this tutoring position. And I was looking into it for one of my older kids to help out and ended up being this family who's at this school that, that I'm interested in going to, you know? So I'm just like, yeah, there it was. Well, this family, there's, there's three Catholic families in this school Mm -hmm. and they were one of the Catholic families. So it was just sort of kind of funny in that way. So, so at um, your house on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, learning the um, lessons with your daughter or they're, they're at my house on, on all day Monday and then Wednesday afternoons. And then the Uh parents, the parents are college professors. And so 
they have some flexibility in their schedule. Say they do some of the other schoolwork on the weekend, you know, their, their Friday schedule. So oh, that works out great. A little bit in that way. Yeah. Mm. That works out. So I, I see some of, I've got to see the, I, I've had that exposure to what the older kids are doing in this school too. So I, I feel like I have that too. Um, the, there's a little bit of discussion. Um, you know, there's this whole absence of, of Mary, um, Mm-hmm. that my daughter finds confusing mm-hmm. you know, who has the on her backpack you know she's got all these little saint keychains and stuff like that mm-hmm. you know so she <laughs> loves to talk about the the saints and and so far they you know how can you say anything to a seven or eight year old girl you can't it's kind of charming it's kind of cute so I'm mm-hmm. sure they're like yeah that's nice you know <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> she's an innocent little yeah, witness out over. there yeah yeah and, and some of the um like if anyone's done the story of the world, I mean, it's, it's pretty fair. Um, and it's treatment of the, the reformation, but that, you know, that sort of comes up. And of course, with the kids that I tutor and, and my kids, I, you know, you're, you're with them three days a week. So you can throw in all the saints and all that kind of thing that they're missing at the school. Mm-hmm. And it's not, you know, it's not contradicting. It's just sort of extra stuff that you're throwing in. And, you know, so mm-hmm. like I'll, I often throw in and this saint lived at this particular time. And um, I tie in our Catholic history as much as I can, because I know they won't get at the school. And so far we haven't any troubles, Lisa. And I think they're very charitable and open. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of respect there. And and so, and we have a lot of respect for them as well. So I want to make sure I teach my daughter that as well, that, you know, we respect their belief and we listen to what they believe and, but we're very firm in what we believe as well. Mm, so it's a nice model if you can make it work financially as you yeah, have. Thanks right. be to God. Obviously, God was helping you out in a big way. Yeah. Um, for somebody who wants some structure, wants a, a certain quality and level of education, not just a kid sitting at a desk all day or being indoctrinated by the state. So you're in yeah. getting some of that school environment and that socialization, but you're also have a track, a momentum, a clarity, and a structure that you as a family can then step into. And, and you, can, you can sort of go, phew, you know, I've been homeschooling right. a long time, and now I know my daughter's yeah, on a and, really healthy track. And you have those two days off. I mean, moms, can you imagine having two days off with your kids <laughs> not in the house? I mean, you know, I, I'm working, but you can like get your cleaning done or whatever. Go get your nails done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, I mean, it's nice in that way too. I mean, if you had little ones, um, I think this would be kind of nice too, because then you've got that sort of time to spend with them mm-hmm. on those two days. And yet your other kids are still being challenged and taught. Mm, and just one last follow-up question is, um, when, uh, what is the grade range in a university model? It's it through high school. It's right it's all the way through high school. Okay, good. All the know. way through high school. And of course, the, the and you know, I said, these, these schools are popping up um, quite dramatically. They're really, you know, I, I can see why it's, it's such a, it's such a great model. And I can see why there's more and more popping up everywhere. Um, the one I'm at started about, let me see, five or six years ago. So it's still fairly young. And so it only is currently through ninth grade. Mm-hmm. And so they're planning on adding a grade every year. Um, but it's difficult because as you get into seventh, eighth, ninth grade, people are, are you know, they pull their kids just, just like other um, struggling or starting private Catholic schools or any other private schools. As they start to get older, it's hard to keep the kids there, even mm-hmm. though that would be a kind of a really neat experience for high schoolers. So, mm-hmm. you know, this ninth grade, I think they have like three students, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Typically, a lot of them go off to Catholic schools and other. Yeah, Things other schools high school. like better, you know, mm-hmm. science and sports and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I think it'll, they'll stick with it because other university model schools, they have, you know, they show the graduations from these schools and big classes of what, like 12 or 13, but, you know, that's mm-hmm. neat. Yeah, that is, it's very neat. Uh, So I just want to clarify that if you'd like to hear Tammy's talk on the, and it's an actual visual, it's a webinar um, from the Homeschool Connections website, go to their archive of free webinars for parents. And this is from the summer conference in 2019, the Slacker's Guide to Homeschooling with Tammy Kaiser. And again, her personal website is TammyKaiser.com, T-A-M-I-K-I-S. 
E-R. And Tammy, can they branch out and find your other websites um, like Heart Ridge Ministries and things like that and your YouTube channel? Can they find all that at TammyKaiser.com? They can. There's links there. So that's the easiest way to do it. And your book too. We want to make sure they take a yeah. look at Smart Martha's Catholic Guide for Busy Moms. Yep. Uh, anyway, thank you so much. What a joy it is to be with you and to hear about a way in a different season of your life that somebody who's homeschooled every different way can suddenly plug the right kid at the right time with God's help into right. something new. Right. And, and I would say too, Lisa, that this is, you know, not say even someone at the end, but someone at the beginning mm. starting to homeschool. This might mm. be that nice introduction, that extra help that one might need, especially as they're, you know, I'm thinking of first and second graders in your home with the babies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think it'd be wonderful that, and, you know, and I think it'd be great even for any age too, but hmm. both times of those, I could see that would be kind of a, a godsend. Hmm. And, and something, as you mentioned, that would be a good guide for people forming their own sort of co-op to be able to look at that model. And that website again is what the university model system international or something like that. U.S. Um, university U- model schools international. So it's U S I'm sorry, U M S I. Okay, U M S I. Good. Okay, yeah, so everybody drop that, that down. Right. You search University Model School and you will see that. It'll pop up. All right. Thank you again, uh, Tammy. We really appreciated it. And that's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com. Be sure to subscribe to Homeschooling Saints and leave us an honest review. God bless you and thank you for joining us.